Last week, Intel finally launched one of its Alchemist GPU with the ARC A380. As a China exclusive there was also an embargo on the reviews coming out. But now we have a review and benchmark from Shenmue Downing on Billabilly. Gives us some real world tests for the performance rather than just synthetics. So far the only custom card is the Gunner A380 Photon GPU which is the one being reviewed. Although none of the options are yet available for sale for this SKU, Intel does have an asking price of 1030 CNY. Whilst likely to offer the graphics card with OEM and pre-built systems, we still see what to expect in terms of performance. The test setup used by Shenmue Downings is a mid-range Intel Alder Lake system. It contains an Intel Core IF of 12400 CPU and a TUFB 660M motherboard with 2AGB DDR4 3200 memory. Whilst the A380 is made with a full ACM Gelevan GPU with 8Z cores, 6GB of GDDR6 memory with a 96 with a clock rate of 2.45 GHz boost for the GPU and 15.5 GBPS. Throughout the testing, it is compared to the GTX 1650, RX 6400, and the GTX 1650 and RX 6500 XD as well in synthetics. That's where we find the ARC A380 takes the lead over the other lower end offerings. With a score of 947 in Port Royal compared to 552 and 575 achieved by the RX 6400 and RX 6500 XD. Whereas the GTX 1650 is unable to achieve a score without RTX, and the RTX 3050 gets 3,534. In TimeSpy, the A380 achieves a score of 5,170 with the 1,650 getting 3,620, the RX 6400 achieving 3,650, the RX 6500 XD improving slightly to 4,773, and the RTX 3050 winning with 6,250. Although in gaming benchmarks the leaderboard changes, with the ARC A380 now falling behind the rest of the low-end offerings. With the tests featuring the more popular titles for the market and AA features, we see League of Legends, PUBG, GTA 5, Tomb Raider, Forza Horizon 5, and Red Dead Redemption, Roman 2. With the performance, all tested at 1080, we see the card lack behind the other offerings. Now out of the cards announced, the RTX 4080 has the biggest leap in price. We knew with the 4090 it would jump above the RTX 3090 but still less than the 3090 tie, and we do see it jump about $100 over the previous MSRP. However, looking back at RTX 3080, that was set to $699 before the shortage situation, whilst the 12GB model that came later jumped another $100, which then comes to $799. So the new models are adding an additional $100, $300 on top of that and the higher 4080 is more in line with a 3080 tie launch price. And in fact, as some early postings have shown such as Galaxy's posting, it is suggested is a completely different SKU of GPU, something we'd expect from a different graphics card, and so it could just be a rebranded 4070. It may be the case that Nvidia tried to make it seem like a better deal than the XX70 model increasing it by $400, nearly doubling, and so a $200 increase over the original 3080 is a much less shocking value. Now there are some features that can justify some price increases. With a newer architecture, there are further improvements. With it utilizing newer TSMC 5 in a production, it had stated that it would be increasing its pricing. Now that all GPU manufacturers use the same foundry, it has felt across the board. It also has further improved its Tensor Core generation improving overall performance and utilization of them. It also has introduced shader execution reordering for improved RT calculation, along with tech to add to further improve DLS as performance. Furthermore, it adds more to the VRAM capacity of the cards. Although one may remain similar, the higher spec pushes it even further. Even without an upgrade to the PCIe Gen 5 interface, there are plenty of other additions. If the performance is in fact two forks faster than the 3080 tie, then it will be worth it. As long as they do keep releasing lower end cards as something close to a 3060 tie would do a good job for a fair price. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Keep watching and stay with us subscribing to this channel. Have a great day.